Hello, today I want to take a look at some trigonometric integrals. We're first going to look at integrals involving sine and cosine and powers of sine and cosine and what we can do to solve those integrals. And to do that, let's first think about what if I just have the integral of sine x dx? What does that equal? So the integral of sine is the negative cosine x plus c. And then the integral of cosine x that's just straight up sine. Okay, so we want to remember those as we do these integrals. But at the same time, when I'm looking at this first one I have here, and we're going to look at all three of these, they're each a little bit different. I have sine cubed x times cosine squared x dx. And you see that, you see a product there, so you are thinking that probably I'm going to have to use u substitution. But if I let u equal, oh, I don't know, let's say cosine x, then du is equal to negative sine x dx, which means I can only substitute in for a sine x dx. I cannot substitute in for a sine cubed dx. So that cubed thing throws me off. The same thing happens if I let u equal sine x. If I let u equal sine x, then du is cosine x dx, but I have a cosine squared, so I cannot substitute that in. I can only substitute in for a straight cosine x. This means I need to mess with this somehow to have only a sine x dx somewhere or only a cosine x dx somewhere. I need each of those chunks so that I can let u equal the other trig function. What I'm going to do, look at this odd power Whichever trig function has the odd power, I'm going to peel off one of them. I'm going to take one of those signs and put it at the end. So voila. I now have sine squared x times cosine squared x times sine x dx. Because this sine squared and this sine x, together they would equal sine cubed, which is what I originally had. So that's good. So you're like, okay, let's let u equal cosine squared. But then I would have u squared du, but I would still have this sine squared. So the next task in these integrals is to get everything in one trig function except the little portion that you're saving for your du. And in order to do that, we rely on our nice little identity friend, the Pythagorean identity of sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. This is so useful in these because then I can manipulate that equation and I can say, all right, well, sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cosine squared x if I subtract over the cosine. That means going back to my integral, I can substitute in for sine squared and I can say sine squared x is the same as 1 minus cosine squared x times cosine squared x times sine x dx. So let's think about that one more time. I need to look at my odd power, take off one of those powers and save it at the end, sine x dx, and then I need to get everything in the other trig function. So since I peeled off a sine, I want everything to be in cosine. Therefore, I convert the sine squareds into cosine squareds by using the Pythagorean identity. At this point, because it will make things cleaner and I won't have to write so many trig functions, I'm going to do my u substitution. And I'm going to let u equal cosine x. That means du is equal to negative sine x dx. So I can deal with that negative one by moving it over. And I'm going to make my substitution. I'm going to end up with negative integral of 1 minus u squared times u squared du. It cleans it up nicely once you do that u substitution. So this was my du, and then I put in my u here and here. Okay, and now I will multiply this through, so I get u squared minus u to the fourth du. And now it's just a little bit of power rule integration. So it equals the negative times u to the third over 3, minus u to the fifth over five. Add one to the exponent, 
and divide by that same number. And then to finish off, I'll just plug back in my u. So it's negative cosine cubed x over 3. I'm also going to distribute that negative in. So plus cosine to the fifth x over 5 plus c. Okay. Now to get a flow for this, um, let's go over to the second problem and try it out. Okay, let's take a look at the second problem now. Uh, and it's going to be sine to the fourth x times cosine to the fifth x dx. Okay, so with this, when we have a sine and a cosine in integral, you want to look at whichever one is odd and peel off a power of those. So I'm left with cosine to the fourth x times cosine x dx. So this little part right here, that's that favorite part of the meal that you save for last. We're saving that for our du, which means my u is going to be sine, okay, the opposite of cosine there, the derivative of sine. So if my u is sine, I need everything to be ter in terms of sine, except for the remaining cosine x dx there. So that means I need to convert cosine to the fourth x into sine. And I go back to my Pythagorean identity. And I recognize that cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared. So I go into my integral and I'm going to convert that cosine. But wait, it's not cosine squared, it's cosine to the fourth. No big deal. I can use properties of exponents and I can say cosine to the fourth is same as cosine squared squared. Ain't that neat. So then I go through one more time crazy dealing with all these high powers of trigonometric integrals um, but it's all right calculus students we can work through it so cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared x squared times cosine x at this point i would recommend doing your u substitution so that i don't have to write all those sines and cosines anymore so i'm going to let u equal sine x which means du is equal to cosine x dx plug her in and I get u to the fourth times one minus u squared squared du. Gotta eat that little that little dessert piece there, that cosine x dx turned into my du. Okay, let's expand this. One minus u squared is going to be one minus two u squared plus u to the fourth. Distribute in the u to the fourth. u to the fourth minus 2u to the 6th plus u to the 8th. Remember that when you multiply same bases, you add the exponents. Now we go through with a few easy power rules. u to the 5th over 5 minus 2u to the 7th over 7 plus u to the 9 over 9. Oh my goodness. And plug in your sign. And if I said, oh my goodness, before... I'm going to say, oh my goodness, again, sine to the fifth x over 5 minus 2 sine to the seventh x over 7 plus sine to the ninth. I don't even know what that means, but it's sine to the ninth power, and it is the answer to our integral. So there we go. Okay, so if we had an odd power of either sine or cosine, that's what we peel off, and then we use trigonometric identity. Um, to get the rest into sine. One more problem here. All right, so I've moved over to our last problem. And in this one, you'll notice there's only a cosine. There is no sine. So your first thought might be, well, let's convert it. Cosine squared, we know, is 1 minus sine squared. So let's switch over to that. And since I have a 4x in my angle above, it'd still be a 4x. But then I'd look at this and it'd be like, well, now there's no cosine. So how can I let u equal sine? Because then du would be cosine, and I don't have that to substitute. So you're like, uh-oh, Pythagorean identities aren't working. You need something else. So here's the thing. If you have just an even power of a uh, trig function, just a cosine squared, just a sine to the fourth, you're going to use your power-reducing formulas. 
the fact that cosine squared x is equal to 1 plus cosine times 2x, so double the angle, divided by 2. Or, if you have sine, sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cosine 2x over 2. So easy to remember both of those. It's plus for the cosine and minus for the sine. And these get your powers reduced. So I'll just have a cosine in there, and I can take the integral of cosine. So that's what I'm going to do with my integral. It's become the integral of 1 plus cosine 8x divided by 2. 8x because I want to double whatever the angle is originally. Now if I split this up, I have the integral of 1 half plus the integral of cosine 8x over 2. I want to split it up because I have to do u substitution on this one. But this first guy is just the integral of a constant. So we can go through this integral is equal to 1 half times x plus here I have to let u equal 8x du is equal to 8dx which means I need to divide the front of my integral by 1 eighth or multiply by 1 eighth. I'm going to pull out the 1 half so now it's times the integral of cosine u du. Okay, so this 8 here became the 1 eighth out here, and that divided by 2 became the 1 half right there. So we go through this again, 1 half x plus 1 sixteenth. The integral of cosine is just sine, so I have sine of u. Now I plug back in my u, and I have 1 sixteenth sine of 8x, and I have my plus c. All right, so there we see if the powers are even. And this works even if I have a sine squared uh, 4x in there as well. Let's say I have that. Then I would use the power reducing formula for cosine there and the power reducing for sine squared there. It would get kind of messy with a lot of multiplying, but you could do it. So if one, if both powers are even, you use the power reducing formulas. If one of the powers are odd, such as our first two problems, you would use the Pythagorean identities. Make the substitutions and then solve those nice little integrals. All right, thanks for watching. I hope it helped.